all humans are created by God to bond. You know, there's a philosophy in the church sometimes that says you should get to a point where you need God only. And actually, that's not true. Because if it was true, we'd have to answer this question. If all I need is God only, and I'm on this side of the fall, then you have to answer the question, well, why wasn't it true for Adam before the fall? Because Adam was told it's not good that you should be alone. Adam wasn't alone. He was with God. The aloneness God referred to there had nothing to do with being by yourself. It had to do with the fact that the human heart was created by God to be intimately connected to God, oneself, and others, the great commandment. And when sin came in, Genesis chapter 3, they broke those three relationships. And those three relationships, when they break, move you into the pain of aloneness. And aloneness, the pain of aloneness, humans are always wired to pursue pleasure. And if I have enough pain, then I find things to medicate that pain that give me a sense of pleasure. The only problem is that source of pleasure, our addictions, create a false sense of pleasure. The Bible makes it clear there is pleasure in sin, except for a season. But I always come back up, but there's pleasure in it, or people would be doing it. Why? We're trying to get our emotional, relational needs met that are not being met or were not met when you were young. Craig Nocken, um defined an addiction this way, as a pathological love and trust relationship with an object or event. Now think about the definition. It's a pathological love and trust relationship that addictions must be seen through a prism of relationships. In other words, people are getting their intimacy needs met. What do I, what do I mean by intimacy needs? I, I refer to them in our work as caress, uh, comfort, acceptance, affirmation, appreciation, approval, uh, attention, affection, respect, encouragement, security, and support. The Bible mentions all of these, you know, comfort one another, encourage one another, support one another, love one another, mourn with those who mourn. All of these are needs are met, and they're the needs of the heart. And, and it's our parents' responsibility early in life to meet those needs. When needs are met, you feel connected in love. When needs are not met, you feel pain. And addiction, then, is really a form of bonding. It is a form of attachment. If I didn't learn to attach in childhood, there's pain. Pain pursues pleasure, and I'm going to medicate my pain somehow. I call it rat poison. I just fill the need with something that produces pleasure. Drinking, drugs, and sex, pornography, masturbation, all of these things produce a feeling of pleasure. What happens over time, the more you act out, you're actually bonding to a process or an object, pornography. Uh, so you, and, and, and objects and processes cannot meet human needs. So the more that you bond to the, attack, to the object, the addiction, that you're trying to get all these needs met, I mean, think about it. When you're acting out sexually, even if it's in a crowd and you're looking at women or you're flirting with someone because you're, you're, you're on the prowl to get your needs met, you're feeling different about yourself. You feel better about yourself. You're in this, you're in this ritual phase that makes you feel different. What are you doing? You're actually trying to get something met that should have been met a long time ago, and this, this addiction will never meet those needs. So it's a pathological love and trust relation with an object or event. Objects and events cannot satisfy human needs. Relationships with humans can. And the Bible refers to four natural forms of relationships. First one, we need a relationship with God. Uh, we, and that's what the scripture is all about. Letting him be Abba and Father and Papa and letting him uh, heal the wounds of that which we didn't get in the earthly realm. We need an intimacy with the Father. We also need an intimacy within ourselves. Freedom from shame and fear, which are the foundation of addictions. And so we have to have a healthy sense of self. We need a relationship with family and friends. And we need a relationship with the community around us. What sex addicts do, and anybody in that addiction, is they sacrifice the four natural forms of relationship for the addictive relationship. And the more that I bond to the addictive relationship, the more I pull away from the natural forms of relationships. Well, what do you do with objects? Well, objects are manipulated. You see, you manipulate objects. You, you control objects. And that is why addicts, in their addiction, manipulate and control people. Because they're not bonding to people, they're bonding to their addiction. And so people are an extension of their addiction to be controlled and manipulated. Addictions cannot satisfy the human heart. They only create more pain.
Where addictive relationships are based off the principle of manipulation, healthy relationships are based off a principle of negotiation. Let's say I go home and my wife's name is Luella and I'm hurt, struggling from a rough day at work and I go home looking for comfort only to find out that she can't give it to me because she's hurting more. The addict will get upset because I want comfort. The healthy person realizes she can't give it to me, but I'm not looking to her to give it to me. I look to the father to give it to me. He might be using Luella. He might not. He might, ha he might have a friend call me on the phone and say, Rick, I was just thinking of you. How are you doing today? I just got a sense that you needed something. Because father will meet the need, but I have to depend on him to meet it. Addicts will take the need because they're about control. Healthy relationships negotiate needs.